Well, it's just, just what you should do is go into the cooler room and read the boxes, you know, and everything in the freezer section at, at, the, at the produce room, it'll say all those ingredients. And I was responsible for getting all those laws enforced properly. And, I, and now I'm responsible for the law that requires that there be a five, that there be a, a huge prominently displayed card, counter card, next to the fruit bins saying the wax, its function, and its origin. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of these waxes are made from animal products or uh, insect products. Shellac is a result of a Lucifer shellac something type bug. Uh, what, fatty acid esters, which is a wax on uh, apples and tomatoes and cantaloupes, comes from beef tallow. That's an animal product. Mm -hmm. Religious people, it's not kosher. You know, uh, Islamic people, Jewish people, they don't want to eat this stuff. Um, and this is commercial produce. This is sold in supermarkets. So unfortunately, the supermarkets don't care because nobody ever yeah. has taken them to court on this stuff, and that's why I'm going to do it. It's very hard to prove, too, right? Mm -mm, true, easy to prove. It's, it, there's a law that requires on the boxes that the supermarkets receive that it mentions these chemicals because these chemicals are incompatible with one another. You mix two of the wrong chemicals together, and you die. That happened, yeah. like, um, with the Alar. On a, not what was it? Remember we had poison watermelons a couple of years ago. You just can't take this, mix all these different things together. It becomes a, a poison cocktail. So that they said well, we know it's a time bomb. Right? We're ready to explode. And there's people with immunology problems that don't even have a resistance to the stuff. They were premature births. So I am, um, but I can't do all the things I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be doing so much, and that's the problem. Because I'm limited as far as uh, I have to do everything myself because I don't I don't have the resources. Okay, so um, what we were talking about was anybody like to make a point right now before I proceed? Are you going to take that? Down? That's like a sign. No. Right? I mean, um, I was just going to say that that's also like a um, a wave of um, sound. Yeah. You know? What you have is that you have the DNA backbone helix is being displaced, just like you said. There's something what? Pushing them apart? Spreading them apart? There is an invisible flux field, okay, that's responsible for the helical shape. Yeah, he the conical helical shape is a result of a, a result of a higher field. Now, the vortices on DNA, when I added the numbers to it, though, they all lined up. And DNA, are you familiar with how you have sister strand? where they duplicate the information and they're a perfect mirror. That's what our DNA is supposed to be doing. And I found that these nested vortices do that. Now, the nested vortices are right here, which is, let's look at two nested vortices. Remember the nested vortices, this one and this one? It's 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 going in. And this one, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 is going out. See how this one's a negative one? This is 1, 2, 4 on the bottom. This is a 1, 2, 4 on the top. They're two different types of nested vortices, and this shows it right here. Boy, these charts really do belong together, because that was the goal. See how these are staggered? This toroid is rigid, it holds together. And what does DNA double spiral helix do? It comes apart, based on these two different kinds of nested vortices. How do these nested vortices work and function? Oops. Okay, by how they line up, based upon the shears, the world boundary conditions, which we've been studying, like in the yin and yang, and the symbol. Where is the boundary condition on the toroid? It's always equaling one. Remember how we did that? One and one is one. Two and five is ten is one. Four and seven is one. Eight and eight is one. See, it's always the same in between. One and one is one. Two and five is ten. It always equals one, which is what you said was the yin and yang. Okay? And it really is making one. What it does is it allows you to have wires that go side by side and naturally insulate because their harmonics, their resonance is so perfect that they don't short circuit out. Okay? Everyone follow that? Okay, Charlie doesn't. Does it have to be at a specific angle? Everything has to be at a specific oh, angle. The whole secret of this whole thing is angle and ratio. Okay? That's what numbers are. They have geometric functions Seven. that are spatial and temporal, which is in your, your worksheet. Let's see. Seven. Can I have that worksheet right there? Can I have that worksheet right there? Seven, seven, three, seven. Okay. Mm, 
this one. Yes. So here's some notes, and what does it explain? Where's the one one one? Yeah. The eight. I don't get the one one one. Here it, here it says it very clearly. Numbers are relatives. Each number exists only in relationship to all other numbers. The relationship is spatial and temporal, which is angle and ratio. There's many other things that this explains. Thank you. Angle for you is time, isn't it? Um, he was first. You did it first. Yell it loud. What do you mean by temporal? I don't know. Related to time? Um, yes. Um, Let's, let's, the timing, only one-sixth of this coil is ever activated at one instance. These charts actually reflect what time is and explain it in that regard. Um, let's see which chart that would be. Um, right now, in this chart over here, okay, only our 396s are activated, okay? See how just our 396s are activated? Okay, uh, well, I'm actually showing the 9s, but 9s are always activated when the 396. I'm showing how everything spins around. Let me find, let me find the family number group 147, which is a little bit easier. Oh, here we go. I accidentally put it on upside down. Here we're showing 147 on the outside of the toroid. Yeah, just one winding, and it would be this 147 and that 147. Do you follow what I'm saying? Remember that family group is on? Yeah. Okay. And it's always separated by thirds in every direction. See? One, then one, two, three. Okay? Diagonally, it's always, it would be 147. They would all be on at the same time. So diagonally, we're thinking that everything's on on this wire. One, four, seven. They're all on. When this one's activated. Okay? Now... Let's see what it looks like from the top of the toroid. You can see all the windings, 147, are on. It's a little upside down, but... And there's that wire. It's just one wire is on right now. And what it's doing is it's showing motion, how things move, because when it goes off and the next family number group moves, things move through the space. It's like the rest cycle. They don't have to be energized all the time. You know, we, we turn on our rockets, they blast it. We only have turn on our jet packs for like three seconds and we keep them shooting through space. So these tiles are energized and then they're turned off and then you jet through to the next tile and you come out to the next space where it'll be energized again. Okay? So sure enough, so here you see in this wire it's all positive 714s. Now what are, where are all the other 714s? They're all negative. They're all on the other wire. Now when we go to the next stage, which I didn't do a board because it's just too many boards to do, it would have been, 285 would have been positive, which is the next wire. Here's a positive 2, positive 8, positive 5. And what about the 285s? They're all negative over here. So this wire becomes positive. Do you follow what I'm saying? Say yes or no. Is there one no in here who doesn't follow? Okay, there's one, two, three. Okay. I'm going to explain to you another way. I'm going to explain to you on the big board. Let's try and work on the big map. Okay. We're only interested about what is on where. Right now, 1, 4, and 7 are on, okay? In this wire, which is also the same as all these other wires where there's a 1, 4, 7, which is all the same wire wound in a star. We all understand that? Okay. Now, the next family, now, that doesn't stay on forever because these little BBs shooting out. I'm really showing you them puncturing the skin and disappearing into the outer uh, space. They're only on when the surface of the toroid is hit by the z-axis, as you mentioned in the very beginning, uh, with dimension. It's, going, it's kind of weaving in and out. Well, what, right. this toroid? Yeah, well, in, in, terms of, in terms of the numbers, it's skipping over the, uh, the other group, right? Well, we'll, one, see, one, well one, let's go to 258. The next family number group that's activated is not 147, but it's going to be 258. And they're all over here in the opposite wire. So this wire is totally off. And when this wire was on, it was all negative 147s in that wire, so the other wire was off. So right now we got this total wires are all on. While this total wire is now all off. So only one wire is ever on when the other ones are off. 
The right one or the left one? Does everyone follow that now? So they're not both going at the same time. They're not both going at the same time. So they're alternating. They're not even alternating because it's based on thirds. Because then when this one's off, okay, this one's on the space where there's nothing. Okay? That's why there's no resistance. And that's why there's no resistance. Okay, and then it comes back to, so this is all on along here. The three nine sixes are all on. So then it goes three space further and then, and then again. And then it comes back to the one four sevens again. So this one, these are all on, and then these are all on, and then the spaces are all on. And I wish I had sequence of charts to show it neater to you, but I think you follow. There probably are some charts. So I just had a little flash here. The um, zero one um, you know, computer system that is, most of it's based on is kind of like in the mode of duality. It's this or that, off or on. When you, you base it on three and nine, it three creates, and six. Yeah, it, three and six. It creates a current that doesn't stop because it's uh, more harmonic. Um, three, nine, and six oscillate. Zero and one doesn't even exist. Mm. They think it exists, yeah. and they think they're making it work. It's like saying. Um, we think we're more to, well, what would be a good analogy? I don't want to give an analogy that's wrong. Let's just say <laughs> their concept of zero and one is, is just their way of saying this is what we're doing and this is how it works. It has nothing to do with math. It has nothing to do with electricity. It has nothing to do with good computations. They need to think in terms of trinity rather than duality. Yeah. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. Instead of like dark light, the, you know, seeing the, those extremes, it's looking at it as yeah. uh, trinity. When, when they build the new computers with this uh, system, would the computers be able to be created by imaginary as we are? Artificial oh, intelligence. Wow, yeah. that's a good idea. <laughs> well, okay, let's take his question. Okay. Say his question real loud one more time while I look for the chart. Let's see, when the, when the, new, when the new computers start using this tertiary, of what, 3, 6, and 9, would they be able to be imaginative and creative as we are? Here we go, we found it. Artificial intelligence. Add infinite magnification. The toroid is recursive. Okay. Um, quantum mechanical effects can be duplicated on a microscopic level utilizing this toroidal model process. Okay. Um, underlying coherence, artificial intelligence, using the triaciary system that you set. So let's see how it works. Okay. A fractal, was, would a fractal, Judy, you mentioned a fractal, would a fractal be artificial intelligence? Because it's self-similar, it duplicates yes, itself from it micro to macro. Yes, it has an element of uh, novelty, so I'd say it is. Okay, would you accept that as an answer? I didn't get that. Can you come back? There's, see, the, the thing with the, uh, artificial intelligence is that it has an input, you put your input into it, but it also can create things from that, mm -hmm. so it, it can problem solve. Mm -hmm. But it has a, a point that's not that can't be figured in, which is called novelty, I think, or something like that. It's like there are other things that it can think of besides what it's, what's been put into it. Mm -hmm. Let's say artificial intelligence, so let's start defining our, our artificial intelligence. Let's start say that, first of all, artificial intelligence is the fact that we have a fountain here, and it's making a little water vortex, okay? But we have a tornado, and it's the same intelligence, but on a bigger scale, a vortex. And let's say we have a solar system, which is our galaxy and our planets and the suns, and they're spiraling in a spiral of a vortex system, which is our galaxy and our planets and the suns, and they're spiraling in a spiral of a vortex. That's, would that be artificial intelligence, one definition? That it can be the same principle from small to big, big to small. Okay. And we do know that those three knowledges were the same. So let's look and see if this does the same principle. Though, so, so it won't, let's, won't be too easy, but 